So yeah, I joined uh, the University of Edinburgh as a senior lecturer in January. Um, before that, I was in uh, RPI, uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in upstate New York. Uh, I was an assistant professor there. And uh, prior to that, I worked as a senior researcher, as a postdoc before that in ETH in Zurich and UCLA and University of Maryland in the States. So uh, my research is on uh, security and privacy. That's my position here. Uh, I work mainly on cryptography with uh, focus uh, on multi-party computation, um, provable security, and in particular composable security, security models that we can use to capture the assumptions uh, that, uh, that we make in a uh, cryptographic proof, um, and then prove the security of protocols. Um, uh, I've done uh, some work on blockchain as well, and mainly on the foundation side of blockchain, so basic research on blockchain. And uh, I've also worked on uh, rational cryptography, so um, instead of considering an adversary who is uh, trying to break the system without a reason, considering adversaries that are trying to get something out of breaking the system, which you can imagine is very, very related to what happens in the blockchain. And the blockchain, effectively, you're going to attack the blockchain if you can make something out of it. If it's a cryptocurrency, you're trying to make money, for example. So there is, uh, th there is something which uh, is kind of a folklore in the crypto community. So you can think of the blockchain as an, an application, actually, of MPC. So people think of MPC usually as uh, um, something that needs to enforce privacy. But in general, security has many aspects. So authenticity is one of them, being able to maintain something in a distributed way. That's what MPC is about. The more classical applications of MPC are trying for... What, what is MPC? Let's start with that, first of all. Uh, so MPC allows a set of parties. Each party has its local data. It allows them to perform a joint computation on this data. This is why I said before that blockchain is a special case. Um, um, so the data are the transactions that we're getting, and what we're trying to do is establish and maintain a common view achieve what we say consensus on this data. Now, uh, the more classical applications uh, are um, auctions. You can do decentralized auctions. You don't need a trusted party. The auctions, the same way as the blockchain is maintained, assuming a majority of some resource, for example, in Bitcoin, majority of the computing power is held by honest parties. You can make similar assumptions, saying that we, we are trying, we are 10 people are trying to, to run an auction. If half of us, are honest, then we can guarantee that the auction is run exactly as securely as when we would have a fully trusted, private, and very, very secure party that performs the auction, an auctioneer. So we can actually remove the auctioneer from the picture, simulate him. Um, electronic voting is a special case of MPC, because once again, what we have is our votes being our private data, and what we are trying to do is make a computation, if you think of just uh, you know, elections, what we're trying to do is majority. Right? We take the data and we try to do the majority of the votes. And we want to do it in a secure way, as if there was someone that was doing the voting for us, but we want to do it amongst us. Again, under assumptions similar to the ones I made before, like majority or some other assumptions. You can, you can even think of a decentralized version of a bank, right? So, so the bank is a centralized entity that performs some computation in essence. So you go as a client, you register with it, you, um, uh, whenever you want to transact, somehow you communicate, e even like the, the, uh, the, the, the existing financial mechanisms could be thought of as being decentralized. So MPC is a general concept that allows you to remove trust from a single entity. Think of the Swift servers, if you want to, to think of a more concrete uh, financial scenario. Um, you can take trust out of those single entities and distribute it to the users of the system. I actually, you know, come from the, the same line of Greek cryptographers, which Agilos is part, if not the root of. Um, uh, I, was, I was a young undergraduate in the uh, National Technical University uh, in Athens uh, when I first met Agilos. At that, at that time, he was a professor in the States. And uh, he's actually one of the first people that I met um, in, 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 my, in the first conference I went. It was uh, in New York, so he, that's where he was located. 
and uh, he's been an inspiration for me in general from the beginning. So we've been friends for for many many years. Um, we've uh, we've we had our first paper collaboration in uh, I think it was 2012, um, which was on decentralizing trust. That's kind of pre the Bitcoin boom. Like it, it was not related to the blockchain. Uh, but it was a, a question about having different trusted authorities and how can you still use them if some of them might be compromised. Um, and then we continued working on, uh, on uh, some more blockchain related topics. Um, this is also how I got, uh, I got to know IOHK. So I, I, I've been involved in the IOHK research for a while. So actually, IOHK has uh, funded some of my research uh, when I was at RPI prior to coming to the University of Edinburgh. And um, it's, it's, it's a, it's, so it's not only a very excited topic, but it's a very excited process to, to, to work with IOHK because um, although they are an industry, they are actually uh, very interested in, in basic research. And that's something that interests me too. So, I, 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 so what we want to do, and so maybe this is a good point to say that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the vice director of the Blockchain Technology Lab. Uh, so we're actually administering together with Agilos, which is located in the University of Edinburgh. Um, the uh, seed for the Blockchain Technology Lab was uh, planted by IOHK. The lab currently is funded both by IOHK as well as other industry partners, Huawei, which we might discuss uh, in, in a while about, uh, as well as uh, um, research grants, for example, from the uh, European Union. Um, so our primary focus here is being researchers and educators. So we want to train the next generation of uh, security researchers, security engineers, and in this lab, we have focus on blockchain. So we do believe that this process and, and, and uh, of creating such a big core of people that are working on blockchain is uh, instrumental for the future of this ecosystem. So producing highly trained uh, researchers and engineers is very important for this uh, technology. And uh, it is, uh, I'm personally very, very excited to be part of this lab and I'm very, very excited to see this lab working uh, with industrial partners that, um, that give us both the resources, of course, that's always exciting, but also directions in doing basic research that has applications. So in the lab, we can see problems from their foundations, from their goals to their security modeling, security proof, application product. And this is pretty unique in this area.